Hi, I'm your host, Marsha Florence for Just Dance. Today we have for you another light and easy cooking show. Hurry back and join us. Hi, I'm your host, Marsha Florence for Just Dance. Today, as usual, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present another light and easy cooking show. And it's the new year, so in the new year, we had to bring back one of our favorite chefs, Chef Antonio Moore. Hey, Antonio. Hello, Marsha. How are you? Fine, fine. Mm -hmm. Happy New Year to you and all that good uh, stuff. Same to you. Good, Thank good, you. good. 2008. Now, it surely is. And you know what, uh, Chef, I have to tell you, I'm full as a tick. Can't eat anymore, so I need, <laughs> right. I need to have something that's definitely light and easy. So, and uh, for the new year, how would you start us off? All right, well, you know, what I want to do is try to get you start your day off strong, so I'm going to do the breakfast thing, you know, which is going to be sweet potato pancakes. Sweet potato pancakes. Uh, yep. The second choice I'm going to do is a nice salad because everybody loves salad. So I'm going to do an apple orchard salad made with uh, fresh honey crisp apples. They're okay. in season now. And last but not least, I'm going to do a fruit wonton, sort of like a dessert, something light and simple and easy. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So we should be changing over our food eating habits like we always do. Everybody's starting to exercise like yeah. crazy. and starting to say, oh, no more turkey, no more right. ham. Right, okay. right, right, because right. we, we've all probably eaten a lot of meats and vegetables for this past holiday season, so I'm just going to put a little twist on some things and get okay. you to start strong with a little breakfast item here. Uh, what I have here is some sugar-free pancake mix in a bowl. You know, I had to take a little shortcut for okay. time. All right, um, you just complete. All you have to do is just add a little water to it, so I'm just going to add a little moisture to it. You know, I gotta ask my famous question. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You see, I'm not having no gloves on. Am I helping out today? Not today. Oh, okay, I thought so. You can help right. me taste it. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. that's that's my answer. I'm that's better. a good answer to me. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when you saw us last, we uh, had the pleasure of having a participant from our viewer, uh, Miss April Boylan, who came to the studio and uh, joined Chef Antonio Moore and myself uh, last, uh, well, in the month of November or December, whenever that show was. And uh, as you can see, we are legit. If she likes the food, she eats the food. If she don't like the food, she tells you she doesn't like the food. So if you're anything like Miss Boylan, you will be honest and say yay or nay. So if you're interested in coming on the show and give us a thumbs up or thumbs down on what you have to eat with us, then give us a call, 248-988-0250, or check out the Just As Talk, Talk Show dot org website and drop us a line. Yep. All right. My next step is that I added the liquid to the uh, pancake mix. Mm -hmm. I added some sweet potatoes. I'm sorry, I was talking. That's okay. okay. You can use fresh. Here I have canned, as you can tell. Okay. Uh, just slice them up real thin. Just mix it in with your pancake mix. Wow. Okay. Now, that, in my wildest days, dreams, I would never think about uh, sweet potatoes in my pancake mix. Right, okay. Well, okay. So you can use canned or fresh. Canned or fresh. Now, if you use the fresh ones, you need to bake them in the oven, and they need to be skinned. So that means you will have to peel the skin off of okay. it. Okay. Don't use a pear knife. Just take it. Once you bake them all the way through, it's very easy to peel right. the skin off your potato okay. as you're making sweet okay. potato pie. All so. right. If you use canned, you drain the liquid. Yep. Just drain the okay. liquid off. And just you know, put them in a container, set them to the side. This is this is really simple. I mean, you can play around with this dish here, but what I'm gonna do is add some pecans to it. Okay. All right, and some nice toasted almonds. Okay. Mm, Mix okay. that up in there. Wow. As, as you know, you can't. You're not doing any cooking if you're not using a hot skillet. <laughs> so I put a little olive oil in there. Okay, okay. that's a little olive. Yep, oil. just a little bit, and we're just gonna drop them in there, just like you're making little cakes. Okay. Okay. I'm already knowing that, well, there's no uh, participant in the audience today. It's me that's eating the food. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so, but like I said, you can come on board. All right. All okay, right. This is like the fun that. part, ladies and gentlemen. You know, and the fun part is actually uh, watching the chefs put it together. And then the actual fun part, after all that, is sampling. And sampling is always good. You know how you go to the stores and they always have the, the, the demonstrators out and they want you to sample the items and everything. That's the only way you really learn if you really like something or not. So this way when you uh, come to the show and uh, stand next to the chefs, 
you get the same feeling. Oh, That's so right. if it's yeah. that simple, why wouldn't you want to try it out? Nice and simple. Now I'm gonna let my heat from the pan do the rest of the cooking. As okay. you can see, you just want to flip them when they start to get nice and golden brown on the side. Okay. Okay. And a presentation is key for me, so I like the food to look good, you know, because <laughs> I know it's gonna taste good, All but right. I want it to look good. Okay. Nice golden brown is what you're looking for. Okay. Nice golden Just brown. Just like okay. that. Yep. And you can you, you can use margarine. You can use butter if you want. You know, you can play around with it. But I just went with olive oil because I'm trying to stay healthy with it. The okay. pancake mix already has a lot of sodium in it. And I just want to add the uh, sweet potatoes to it to help give it a different type of flair. Okay. okay. So you actually can can cook, cook pancakes in olive oil. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking. I'm oh, always yeah. thinking of oh, something yeah. else. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I know some people might say, what? Olive oil? You spray right. it or not? But well, olive oil is the, is the, the new kid on the as far right. as cooking is concerned. Now this right, right here. That was quick. Just, okay. Quick okay. and simple. Okay. That's, that's what this is all about. We're going to make them sweet potato pancakes. Now. Now I noticed that you cut the fire off early. Yeah. Okay. Because in this cooking process, by the temperature of the pan being already at a probably about 350 degrees already. Mm -hmm. There's no need to keep the, the fire going on the skillet because I'm almost done. I just want to let my heat of the pan okay. do the rest of the cooking. Okay. We'll okay. pour a little syrup on top of it. Sugar-free syrup. Sugar-free. Sugar-free so you know that for you, our diabetic friendly friends, this is for you. That's right. This is for you. Okay. So, and Weight Watchers, this yep. is for you too. It's pecans, right. walnuts. All right. And we're going to put a little nice little strawberry fan on here. Do you know the man's not finished unless it's got a garnish? Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. And fan that out. Put that right on top. That's my breakfast? Breakfast. Okay. okay. That's in a I flash, mean. that is. All right. All right. Breakfast I, in a I, flash. I tell you what, I promise I will not sample it till we come back. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm your host, Marsha Florence from Just Ask. Today, our show is A Day with Emergency Medical Services and a look inside an emergency medical vehicle. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm your host, Marsha Florence from Just Ask. Today, our show is A Day with Emergency Medical Services. And, ladies and gentlemen, as you notice, we opened up with the show inside of the emergency medical vehicle. But we're going to start off with one of the paramedics of the STAR EMS, Ms. Carrie Holden. Hi, Gary. Good morning. Glad to have you here. Thank you, Marsha. It's nice to Thank be you. here. Now, Gary, it's unusual for us, but we've decided that we need to have our public know what is a day like in emergency medical service situation. And I want to start off with a little bit of information about yourself, how you got involved. And I know that there's three titles, so Correct. fill us in on that. Okay. Well, my name is Carrie Holder. I live in Waterford. I've been working for Star EMS now for about a little over three years. And how I got involved in this business was back in high school, I had a big fear of being in front of crowds. And I, one of my girlfriends from high school had passed out, and I froze up. I didn't know what to do. And from that day forward, I decided that I needed to do something about that to get over that fear. So finally, I became proactive and took a basic life-saving um, class at Waterford EMS Academy and to help get over my fear. After that, I fell in love with it. So I went on to their paramedic school, and wow. here I am. Now, Kira, I understand that there's three different levels of a EMS worker. What are those? Well, we have the three different types are basic, specialist, and paramedic. And I'll, the difference between the three is your basic is your simplest level. You learn first aid, basic life-saving support, the next level is your specialist or what they call intermediate and that you're able to start IVs. And then the next level, the paramedic, which is what I am, we are trained in intubating and being able to read a cardiac monitor and pre um, deliver certain types of cardiac drugs and life-saving drugs. Okay. And welcome back to the last half of our show. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just now joining me, we have Carrie Holder, paramedic from Star EMS in Pontiac. And as we opened up the show earlier, you saw me standing out in front of the vehicle here, the emergency medical vehicle. So we're in here now with Carrie, going over a few things of what to expect when you enter a EMS vehicle. So Carrie, I'm glad you got us in here. This mm -hmm. is my first time actually being into a uh, emergency medical vehicle. Tell me, what do you do when you first start up your day? First thing that I do in the beginning of my shift is my partner and I will come into our ambulance, our little mini hospital on wheels, and we check all of our cabinets. What we're checking for is to make sure that we're fully stocked, we have enough supplies. And then we also have to check uh, some of our 
more advanced equipment. Uh, for instance, like our EKG monitor, we have to check and make sure that all that is fully functioning. Go into a couple cabinets here and we check uh, for our jump bag. Our red bag here is what we actually take into a house when we're called on scene. And we have our drug box. Just making sure that everything in this ambulance is functional okay. for when we get to a house and we get a call. Okay, now I'm, I'm checking out the stretcher here and I know this is locked down. So a lot of people always wonder, when you get into an ambulance, you know, will I be moved around, jumping around? So this is actually locked down onto the floor, bolted, or how is this stretched in? Well, it is a very secure environment that you are going to be in. Our stretcher actually, it hooks on to a latch right here, which is bolted to the ground. Okay. So it does not move. Now, granted, we are going to be going down the road and you are going to hit some bumps, but the stretcher itself is not going to move. And with that, we strap you in and have your typical seat belts here. Mm -hmm. For added. What we need to know about scleroderma. So, Sharon, can we start with you? Okay. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about scleroderma. Uh, what it is, it's a chronic autoimmune connective tissue disease. And the word scleroderma literally means hard skin. And what our bodies are doing, they're uh, making an overproduction of collagen, which affects um, our blood vessels. Uh, anything that has tissue, and uh, our organs, all of our major organs. Okay, okay. Now, in the event that a person has scleroderma, is there any particular uh, signs or symptoms that they should be looking for? How does one know? Uh, there can be many signs in the beginning, uh, depending on the type of scleroderma that you have. Um, I think Annie can touch on that. Well, there's two types of scleroderma. It's the localized and the systemic. Uh, and like notice when you first notice the scleroderma, my symptoms were like the swelling of the hands, the fingertips, the coldness. There's a Raynaud's phenomenon, which is the the uh, poor circulation in our fingers. Mm -hmm. And I mean anything from sticking your hand to the refrigerator, you pull them out, your fingers are black and blue. And pretty much 90% of the people who have scleroderma have Raynaud's phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have the joint pain, the poor circulation in the blood, the uh, like I said, the hands are swollen, your body is swollen, you're in chronic pain. Uh, it's just overall pain when, it, and when you first start out. Uh, the disease just, it varies with every, every one of us. We are, okay. like, insurance is different than mine, but we may have a combination of scleroderma, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis. It overlaps. They overlap each other. Okay. Now, by Hi, I'm your host, Marsha Florence with Just Ask. Today we're here in Lansing, Michigan at the Capitol. Here with a bus for our Partnership Prescription Assistance Program with Montel Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, we haven't met Montel yet, but we want you to stick around and get some information about the Partnership Prescription Assistance Program.